If you don't know uh, Eli, he is uh, Tempvar on Twitter, and more recently known for doing just crazy hardware things with Node, um, like building a custom CNC wood router out of wood and metal and, and Node. <laughs> and, uh, and JS Dom, right? You're at, no? Yeah, so if, if anybody here uses JS Dom, he birthed uh, JS Dom as well, which is uh, pretty awesome. So. <laughs> and he's also extremely humble. So again, Burt, I think Burt Reynolds, Mountains, Dom with a node, hardware, CNC router. Burt Reynolds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, so I love hardware. I love node. I'm obsessed with both. Like this? <laughs> Can you hear me now? Uh, okay, so I love hardware. I love Node. Um, I'm kind of obsessed with both. And when I can mix the two, um, it's really great. It makes me feel really nice. Um, hardware gives me the ability to work with my hands and build things that are real, that you can touch. Um, I'm a big fan of um, like tactile uh, computer interfaces. And um, namely, uh, I've been working on this uh, thing called the Tempad, which is uh, kind of a replacement for a drum machine, but open source, or open hardware, if you want to call it that, and open source. Um, and so I've kind of went through this whole journey of like building this, uh, this stack. Um, I have a video from NodeConf where I, where I kind of told the story of uh, how I got to um, where I am now, or where I was then, actually, that was a year ago. And I guess um, I didn't really have time to prepare much, so I'll do a little bit of hacking, a little bit of you know, hand waving, and then you know maybe maybe that will suit your fancy. I don't know. Um, do we have any musicians in the in the audience? Anybody that uses like a machine or you? Okay, I might need you later. Okay. I will need you later, no. <laughs> okay, so uh, in this picture, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but these are circuit boards that I've etched myself um, and put them uh, through like an etchant and like designed the circuits and like for basically from ground up um, develop these things. Uh, and I really love working at that level. Uh, it kind of gives me a lot of control and a lot of uh, speed and iteration. Um, I can go from one prototype to, to the next in a couple days, as opposed to sending away to, to a board house and like, you know, waiting a week or paying $500 or, you know, it's, it's kind of expensive. Uh, so here's a picture of the boards actually etching, if you can see that. Uh, I'm using cupric chloride. This is not really a node talk yet. I, it will be. It will be, I promise. Um, circuit boards were designed in Eagle. Eh, eagle. And here's it running with an Arduino. And so the original temp pad, um, this guy, I don't know if anybody's seen this, um, it has one AVR chip on it, one microprocessor, and a bunch of little LED drivers that are extremely hard to attach to the board. <laughs> like, extremely hard. Um, so what I've been like working towards is a bunch of individual units. Um, the smaller you make a circuit board, the cheaper the board is. So you just get a bunch of little boards and put a brain on each one and have um, kind of a master node that like communicates over uh, an internal like serial network uh, to turn on the LEDs or you know do whatever. Um, so that's kind of what this thing is doing. Uh, this is. A uh, couple iterations old, but sometimes I don't get pictures in time of the iteration before it like lands in the garbage or in the failed pile or whatever. And this is the new CNC machine, which I am absolutely in love with. I'm soldering homing switches on it. Uh, and this is, this is like a big passion of mine. Uh, not only building the CNC, but also building the software to drive it. 
And that's what I want to show you. Um, kind of like where I'm going with the software. So there's this whole, um, no, it's not in live, sorry. <laughs> we don't play music on the CNC yet. Uh, okay, has anybody seen the demo that I do with this, this thing? I'll do that in a second. Um, first, uh, so in CNC machining, uh, how do I explain this? You, you have a spinning tool that moves in three dimensions and you can cut out arbitrary shapes in basically 2.5D. So there's a big problem um, with the width of the tool bit. So say it's a quarter inch and you're cutting a shape out, you can't just follow the line because you'll actually be overcutting by an eighth of an inch. Does that make sense? Or undercutting, depends on what you're doing. If you're cutting the, the shape out or if you're, if you're cutting a hole or you're cutting the shape out, right? So there's this whole like uh, computational geometry thing that um, focuses on polygon offsets. And this stuff is really crazy. Um, there are like papers coming out all the time about it and the software that you get that actually does this is called CAM and it just does like processing layer by layer and it does what's called a polygon offset and it identifies islands and it does all this other crazy stuff. Um, I want to build one of these in JavaScript and make it open source uh, because the ones that are not are extremely expensive. They're like thousands of dollars, kind of like SolidWorks or you know, Photoshop or some other big like desktop software application that uh, you probably don't buy. <laughs> yeah, AutoCAD. All the Autodesk stuff that's not free. Um, okay, so this is where I am right now. Um, I think I have it open already. And I hope this isn't too show-offy. Um, so I'm, I'm attempting to, you can kind of see that, right? I'm attempting to off -shape, offset um, this weird shape going inwards. Um, I've got some ears left on it that need to be pruned, but um, this is, this is a, my project called uh, Poly Offset, and it's open on uh, GitHub slash tempvar slash poly offset. So, if you have any experience with this, I would appreciate any help. Um, but basically what this allows me to do is kind of like offset shapes. And it, it almost works. It's really close, really close. <laughs> it's always really close, right? And until you get into like, ah, that's, that's kind of close. That's the J from the JavaScript logo, which is my, my nemesis. I just can't seem to cut out the J and the S at the same time. Whatever. Um, and these are all generated with Node Canvas, and they're, uh, they're part of the automated test suite. So you get instant validation whether or not you're getting better or worse. And there's, uh, there's 30 cases in here. Uh, that's so close. <laughs> <laughs> that one works pretty good, uh, but I'm only moving like two units. Um, and then we get into some weird stuff where the image doesn't load completely. Uh, it's, it's not too bad. It's actually surprisingly maybe okay. Um, yeah. And, oh, oh, come on. Whoa. Let's try that again. How much does the CNC machine cost? So the CNC that I built, uh, so I built one, cost me about $1,500. It was out of wood and M MDF. Uh, the second one cost me a little bit more because it's all aluminum and I use actual like linear guides and like a real spindle motor instead of a woodworking router. So, I don't know, probably 2,000, 2,500, somewhere in there. So the software costs like Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's very cost prohibitive, especially for like hobbyists. You know, there's like the whole um, shape Oko and like all these like little CNC machines that, I, I mean, there's, there, we're missing a part of the tool chain to actually generate um, 
like from a 3D model into like, hey, let's cut this thing out. Let's, let's make this thing real. And if, who knows what a CNC machine does? Okay, a CNC machine, who knows what a 3D printer is? Okay, so a CNC machine is like the inverse of a 3D printer, whereas a 3D printer is adding material, the CNC machine is actually using a cutting tool to remove material from a block of wood, or whatever you want, aluminum or titanium, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it done on YouTube. <laughs> it happens. Uh, well, can I generate G code from this? I'm so happy you asked. Yes, I can. Okay, so it's good enough to be bad, but we can we can kind of play around with it a little bit. Uh, so let me queue up this guy. Um, okay, I'm not on the network. So good thing I downloaded this earlier. Thinking ahead, sometimes. Okay. Uh, okay, so plain.svg is just a SVG file. It's a bunch of arcs. Um, we can actually uh, open this in uh, Chrome. Let's see what it looks like. You need a Chrome on there? Come on. <laughs> yeah, let, let's boot VirtualBox, because that'll be awesome. That doesn't take long at all. All right. Come over here. I know how to use a computer, I swear. Okay. So it is a plane, right? Okay. So now we can um, cat plane.svg into SVG mil, which is a part of this uh, poly offset project. It's kind of like taking, um, taking the offsetting code and actually turning it into something that you can use against an SVG. So if we run this, and all hell doesn't break loose. Uh, it will actually, uh, so this is, this is the G code that was generated. Um, I don't know if I would trust it on a real machine yet, but eventually, that's the idea. Uh, so this is all WebGL and you can you know, look around and, uh, this is actually online, um, GitHub tempvar G code dash simulator, and it's open and please fork it or break it or whatever, I don't care. So yeah. It, I mean, for this particular shape, it's, it seems to work pretty well. Yeah. yeah and now we're done. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the reason why I build the CNC machine is to actually um, mill parts for this guy. Um, yeah, talk about a yak shave, right? <laughs> so I milled the buttons uh, and the aluminum on the wooden CNC, which was dismantled like six months ago. So this is one of four in existence, probably ever to be in existence. So I'm, I'm using these uh, really expensive pressure sensors in here. Um, from Interlink, there are Interlink FSR 406, I believe. It's not really important. Uh, basically, their pressure curve is, it's not very awesome. It's exponential to start, so if you just like tap on it, it's already like, you know, 90% of the way there, and then you have to like, really press on it to get it to go the last 10%. Um, so there's like a default mode where, you know, you press the button a little bit and it turns a, you know, a different color. It's kind of cool. So I wrote a, a node REPL for this thing. Um, so you can actually change um, T-pad, color, red, green. Um, oh, oh no, okay. <laughs> I didn't 
catch A. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Animate on S HSV. So this, to me, this thing is really awesome, except for the pressure pads. And so that's why I'm diving into like all of these other, you know, can I make my own pressure, pressure pads? Because they're, they're also expensive. They're not very great. They're like not linear. And they're also really expensive. They're like $10 a pad. So this thing would be at least $40 plus the circuit board, plus you know, all the chips and all that, and plus the aluminum and the wood and time, labor. So it's just not cost effective to, to sell because it would just be like, a boutique product and that's not really what I'm aiming for you know I'm, I want like the best tactile interface for a generic button pad that exists right this is just sending over um, over or it's sending data over um, serial over MIDI and I can do whatever I want with it like I can turn it into MIDI I can turn it into OSC if I wanted or whatever I mean it doesn't really matter it's I'm really proud of this <laughs> Uh, okay, so there's a bunch of tools. So this kind of, um, uh, it's half busted. Brr. Okay, so press a button, but you just press it a little bit and it's like, oh, you can barely see that. There we go. <laughs> So, I mean, it's... Like the, dan uh, the wine stands. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that these, these sensors are the way that they are, but it's kind of led me down this whole, this whole new road. Um, but before I, before I stop, there wasn't many people that had, si had seen this thing or the demo before, so I can continue. You wanna come up here? You wanna do some Ableton live play? Chopsticks the hell out of this thing. All right. Okay. Uh, what was it? 3,500. Okay. So we have. Um, oh man, what is going on with this thing? There's a bunch of drum set up somewhere over there in live. What are you doing? Let me fly that plane. I'm gonna be amazed. <laughs> no, we're we're not that good yet. Actually, I'm already amazed. So what else? Okay. Ah! No. Nope. Okay, so we're missing. Uh, uh, give me one second. Sorry, we have to quit live and start it again. Um, hopefully, that will resize it to the correct size. Okay, that button works. Awesome. Okay, so then we load our thing. So this is very unstructured, kind of. I'm just kind of like throwing stuff out there. Um, if you have any questions or like you want to throw something at me, feel free. Or, you know, whatever. It's cool. Or if you want to play this thing after he's done, you can come up here and play it. I'll continue talking. Does it work with any kind of uh Right, so the idea here is that, um, well, it, it's just sending serial data across to Node. Node picks it up and is like, oh, well, um, you know, I know how to, using Node MIDI, I can shoot out MIDI events. And so we just turn the serial into MIDI events with, and you could do af after touch and all this stuff, which Ableton doesn't even support, but yeah, yeah. So basically you can do pretty much whatever you want as soon as it's on the computer in Node, which is potentially really handy. I didn't know that it does. That's pretty cool. Yeah, there's Node OSC too. <laughs> awesome, awesome. If anything, that's what I'm hoping to do. Just. Do you know the guys from uh, Control Voltage in uh, 
Portland? No. They have a store where they make, I mean, I don't think they're doing anything this rad, but they make their own scents and stuff. Oh, nice. Anyways. Oh, this is not going to work. They would basically, like, have a stroke talking to you right now. It's amazing. Uh, oh, I know why. I know why. I got this. <laughs> Somewhere in here, there is a, a record button. Oh. Anybody know the hotkey for that? No? Uh, it's you? No, two iterations out, man. This thing's way different. Hmm. Gonna fold this thing down. Yeah, there we go. There it is. Okay. Fold that up. And okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So cracker. Cool. Can we do that sweet dumb, uh, dubstep patch I saw in there? Oh, uh, which one? <laughs> I want to be like Skrillex. Oh yeah. No, I don't. Okay. Okay. And that's all I'm doing. Okay. Do <laughs> that's sexy as so. hell. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna sit Thanks, right man. there. Cool. <laughs> Okay, so that being done, um, okay. Did so, you experiment with doing more than four controllers or four buttons? Four, yeah, yeah, like four buttons. Well, uh, so the the rig um, that I'm working on has five, but the idea is that the idea is that. Um, I don't know if you can see, but they're all they're all ribbon together, right? So you can just add up to whatever you want. Well, it's, yeah, we, you start running into bandwidth problems, but yeah, it's essentially as many as you want in whatever configuration you want. That's that's where I'm going with this. Um, okay. So as I'm building um, more and more hardware and iterating on all this stuff, um, I I've been using uh, like Node Chrome and Socket IO to and Serial Port to like pull data off the serial board and send it up to the browser and like graph it. Uh, that was that visualized with the bouncing lines. Um, but to me, that's that's kind of slow. Um, the turnaround time or the setup time, because each demo is kind of different. The the boilerplate is just not it's not good. Um, so I've actually been working on this thing called Node Boosh. Um, which is yet another yak shave. Um, and so what this thing does is it takes the rendering, the, the core rendering engine from uh, Google Chrome, which is Skia, and I've written a uh, Canvas implementation, an HTML5 Canvas implementation on top of it. And then we take that and combine that with GLFW, which is an OpenGL um, native uh, context windowing thing, so you can actually get mouse events and uh, throw images into Web G or OpenGL and kind of render them. So an example of this um, is, we'll just do basic. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Yeah, so, yeah. So the, the code for this is um, surprisingly simple. Uh, I mean, not not the actual like bush itself because that's a nightmare. But the example is pretty simple. It, it's kind of like how you'd use it on in in the browser, but I've kind of just ripped it out and well re-implemented it. But the point is, um, it's really awesome to do stuff with this because it's so simple to like kind of uh, work with. It's just it's really fast iteration. It's one file. You're spawning a window. You're drawing to it, so you can graph whatever you want. You can probably use, I haven't tried it, but you can probably use most Canvas libraries because it's 
it's basically the same thing, right? You're just fill styling and filling rectangles and stuff like that. Um, and if that is not enough, um, you can actually, oops. So th this is proof that it actually handles um, mouse move, mouse click, turns green, double click, or right click, rather. Uh, when you leave the window, it knows. Um, when you enter, it follows. You can type, um, and it knows the bounds, oops. It knows the bounds of its box, so. So you have access to all this stuff. It's just window.width, window.height. You can resize it. Um, you can cancel closes. So if I click, it's like, hey, no, you can't close yet. <laughs> now you can. So you can actually cancel the close event. So it, I, wanted, I wanted to mimic um, the HTML5 API um, from a Canvas perspective, but I also want full control over uh, how big the window is and where it is on the screen and uh, is it transparent, you know, stuff like this. Just raw control over one single, you know, drawing surface, spawn from node, one file, yeah. Could you have done the same thing with the uh, Chrome native or whatever it's called? Like the content or the Chrome content shell or whatever that is? Well, you can power, you can bring up Chromium like through your node app and use it like a UI layer. Yeah. Um, so there's there's two things there's uh, Node WebKit and Node right. no, AppJS right. right. Um, I actually helped with AppJS for a little while, but uh, they are doing some crazy stuff, and I'm not I'm not poo pooing it. Um, it's right. a great project, but they've actually merged context via JavaScript, um, Chrome's V8 and or Content Shell's V8 and Nodes, which means. Um, it's really slow because they're constantly copying back and forth between the V8s. Yeah. So this is really kind of it's minimal. Like slimmed down, right? Yeah. It's just a canvas. So you could implement HTML on top of it, or you could actually render um, to an image and composite it here. Right. Right. Yeah. Cool. Right. Cool. Okay. So um, I brought kind of an old um, button rig with me. Uh, Kind of a, a test to see, you know, if I could do um, pressure sensors that were similar to this um, by myself, and I think that's the direction that I'm heading. Um, and I've used Boosh to actually. Um, I do have to plug it in first. Well, I that, if I can ask, I see that you're, this is a temporary module to be integrated with Solid's Boost. What's with Solid's? Uh, so Boosh is, I want it just to be a, um, a CLI script or like a binary that has um, potentially node bound directly to this thing. So you just download the binary, you have node, NPM, everything. But I'm still not sure how all that works. Um, there was a lot of talk in the beginning of Node about um, creating, uh, creating distributions of node. Um, but I haven't heard much about that since, and I don't think anybody's actually done it. So, I don't know. For now, it's just Node Boosh, and you can install it, and it, will, it should work on Mac for you. You should be able to you know, run the examples in the directory, and it will take a little while to install, though, because it's 50 megs of Skia. Okay. So, I'm running an Arduino, uh, Node Serial port, on and Boosh over here. Uh, Let's see if I can get these in focus a little bit more. Oh, computer, why? Okay. So these are on boards that I etched. Um, so it's it's not it's not too bad. The harder you press it, the smaller the little dot gets, right? So if I was fancy enough, I could actually like rotate it around. There's actually four sensors per button, so I'm also going that direction, like my own sensors, um, more pads per button. But I do all of this to just say, you know, it's like how, how many people do like mess around with hardware? Okay. Um, how many people want to? Yeah. Okay. Well, you should. You definitely should. 
Um, you have my full support. Uh, <laughs> call, me, call me at 3 a.m. I don't care. Um, I will definitely help you out. I, um, I love this stuff to death. It's like, this is real. And it, it's communicating with the computer, right? It's, it's actually real. If you put a coffee mug on here, you can actually fly it like a joystick. <laughs> Um, I think that's all I have. <laughs>